Today I'm going to share with you my process for how I find journals to submit my papers to. So this can be a really complicated process. If you don't know how to do it, you can feel like, I don't know if this is the right journal or this is the right journal. Maybe you just go with whatever your advisor suggests or you just go to whatever is the easiest to find. And finding the right journal is probably the biggest factor in getting your paper actually published because your paper could be the most amazing paper in the world, but if you submit it to the wrong journal, it's going to get rejected. It doesn't matter how good the paper actually is. So I have a three-step process for how I find journals to and choose a journal to actually submit my paper through. So I'm going to walk through that. But very first, I want to let you know that I have a scientific research paper checklist. So if you're just trying to write your research paper, check that out in the description below. And it just walks you through how to actually write it and check off all the stuff you need to submit. But the second thing that I think is really important before we get started in the process is understanding when should you be looking for a journal. So a lot of people will write their paper and then they'll start looking for a journal. And this is already setting you up for disappointment and potentially failure because you've written an agnostic paper. You've written a paper that is not directed towards the mission of any journal. It's just a paper. When an editor reads that paper, they're not going to be like, oh my gosh, this was meant for my journal. They're going to be like, okay, it's, it's a paper. Maybe it works for our journal. Maybe it doesn't, but it's just overall a paper where when you go, okay, I want to submit my paper to this specific journal. This is their mission. This is what they accept. Then you know how to write your paper in a way that makes it a no brainer for that journal for that editor to say, okay, yes, this was meant to be in my journal. I'm going to publish it or obviously they're going to send it out for peer review. But afterwards, you're probably going to get a lot less desk rejections if you know your journal up front. So the first step in the actual process is to just find potential journals to submit your paper to. And this might be really hard for a lot of people to figure out, okay, where should I be looking? Should I just search journals that accept papers in reproductive physiology or something like that? And you might find a lot of them that might not match your specific mission or the project you're specifically doing, and you might not know that yet. A good way to find journals to accept your paper is simply to look at what papers are you referencing that are closest to the project. So think about if you're writing a research paper, this is probably going to be in your little bit of literature that you give in your research paper. If this is a literature review, think about the major papers that you included in your literature story. Those are going to be the papers that are closest to your research project. So when you do that, look at where they're being published. Look if one journal comes up a lot or one journal sounds really closely to your project. The second place for you to find it is look for similar projects that have been done as well. You probably should be mentioning these projects in your research paper, but if you're not, if you know similar projects that have been done or similar things in your lab that have been done, where are they submitting their papers to? And then the third really good place to find journals to submit to is where have you presented this research? A lot of conferences actually have their own journals. So if you're submitting to certain conferences and they've already accepted it as an abstract, there's a good chance that it actually is likely a good fit for that journal overall. So you can check, okay, I, for example... I went to American Society for Mass Spectrometry a lot in grad school, and I have multiple papers published in the Journal for American Society for Mass Spectrometry. It's because I already know it's a good fit because they're accepting my work to present there, and so it's probably a good fit for actually publishing as well. So once you have a list of a few different journals, I usually start with a list of about three different journals. Once you have that list, the next thing you want to do is make sure that those journals actually accept the type of paper you're trying to publish. So this is most commonly a problem with reviews and communications or short articles. So whenever you're trying to create these, you need to make sure that the journal is going to actually accept it. If you try and submit a, a review to a journal that doesn't accept reviews, obviously you're going to get desk rejected. 
before you even select your journal, what you want to do is go into everyone's author's guidelines. Most journals are going to accept research papers, but you still want to check the author's guidelines even if you are publishing a research paper so you know that if they have certain limits on the figures that can be in your research paper or on the amount of text you can have and everything like that so that you know, go into their author's guidelines, look at the types of our submissions that they accept and make sure that they're accepting the type that you want to submit your paper as. This can also be a really good case for one example I was going to submit as a research article. I found that the journal I really wanted to submit to also accepted communications. And after a little bit of thought, I thought that my paper would actually be more suited to the communication style and ended up submitting it that way as well. If you know the different types of formats of that journal, you can know which one's going to be best set for your article. The third step you really want to go into is what is the mission of that journal? So even if a different paper that is close to yours was published in that journal, it doesn't necessarily mean that yours is going to be a good fit for that journal. So generally in the very beginning on the homepage of the journal's website or in the author's guidelines, they're going to have a place that basically says our mission is or we accept articles that... And then they're going to state the specific things that they want in their specific journal. If it's not obvious to you how your paper fits into that, one, it's probably not a good journal. But even if it is obvious to you, you need to make it obvious in your writing how you're fitting what they accept and what their mission is. And that is going to be one of the easiest ways to at least get out for peer review for a journal and not be desk rejected because you've made it clear in every single part of your paper and your cover letter and everything why your paper belongs in that journal. And the final thing you can do is look at what they're publishing most recently. So if your paper is matching what they're kind of publishing in their last few issues, what's been recently coming out, then you know that you're a really good match. Sometimes journals will kind of go through phases where they're really accepting one type of article and not accepting other types, or they've changed their mission and haven't really updated their documentation yet. And I've had this happen to me before and where I was actually desk rejected, but then they were like, oh, yours actually belongs in our sister article. And if I had actually looked at their articles, this was earlier in my career, if I had looked at their articles, I could have probably saved myself the time and effort in that desk rejection and having to reformat everything for their sister article. So that's the other thing you can do. Look at what's been published in the last year. Does it match? Does it feel like a similar theme to what you want your paper to be as well? Once you know the journal that you want to submit to, you're all set to start writing, get in there and you know, always be thinking about that journal as you're writing so that it seems like it's the best fit for that journal. It's like writing a cover letter for a job. When you write a generic cover letter for a job, it feels very generic. So that's a good thing to always keep in mind to increase your chances of actually getting accepted into that journal. Here are a few videos to help you if you are struggling with writing your research articles. And if this was helpful, please like it and subscribe to this channel for more tips on how to become a more efficient researcher. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video.